Hi, everyone. Hi, Ken. Hi, Bartek. Good Hi. morning. Morning. How are you, Bartek? Very good. Very that's good. good. That's yeah. good. You? <laughs> good. I've been very busy. <laughs> Could be less busy. <laughs> but um, are you coming to KubeCon? No, I decided to skip at the end because oh my there, goodness. Were, there was some budget conversation and then uh, and then also we decided to we I'm traveling before I will be in New York and then I'm traveling to Mexico so uh, lots of travels. Oh my goodness, yes, I can see that. I mean and then I think Chicago is pretty cold. <laughs> so yeah, I'd pick Mexico anytime. <laughs> Are you going on vacation? <laughs> New York is with the team, yeah, some work, and then Mexico's vacations. Okay, okay, cool, cool, very cool. Hopefully, you'll make it to Paris. So. <laughs> it's close. Yeah, yeah, fun. <laughs> like we have some, yeah, just just nice things planned. I think still like the the CVP is open, so we yes really can can think about some nice speakers and um and yeah, may I mean of course observe. Yeah, yeah, that. totally, totally. We should we should actually you know for, with the uh, tag sessions we um especially with each tag I think we have the opportunity to do like a special um you know day kind of half a day with the tag or you know uh, actually get some of the projects to um, present and and maybe that's something we could target for uh, mm -hmm. Paris because. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the, you know, many of the contributors are based in Europe. And... Yeah, I mean, observability day is kind of like this, like it's it's kind of similar in the end. Yes, like, yes, that's users. true. Maybe maybe like doing a boff or something at the end, you know, just for being able to discuss stuff. But doesn't have to more, be very formal. Exactly, doing more in this space, like even utilizing our attack observability, um, you know, for on maintainers track, kind yep. of like. Yep. bringing somebody from end user as well into this as a speaker like i don't know like it can be it can be lots of options yeah we can do that i mean we can uh, i mean uh, ken and i are going to catch up uh, this week and kind of finalize the topics i'll share the deck uh, out with you guys so that you know again feel free to add any topics but yeah, i love yeah. the idea that you know maybe having some key end users present um and kind of talk about some of the uh, implementations they have done with uh, different uh, observability stacks you know like we uh, for example we use prometheus a lot um and you know and thanos as well as cortex as well as other projects so it would be nice to be able to kind of um, at least talk about you know some of the implementations and um yeah general architectures mm, yeah let's think about like Another alternative is, is this project meeting, which was very successful in the past, like the room was overly full. So people want yes. to hear, want to give opinions, want to share their worries, want to share their, like, that's maybe an opportunity for, like, bringing the, 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 the people, uh, people's data, really, input. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you mentioned maybe the, the collocated day as a, as a, as a like, even as the presentations, whatever, but maybe actually uh, more more of discussion forum, like on conference, uh, even as a project meeting, or maybe as a collective. Yes, like, exactly. Oh, exactly. I think that's a good idea because you know, in the main days of the conference, the obviously everybody is there, so it's much more well attended, uh, and that's definitely a possibility. Let's let's uh, kind of brainstorm about some of these uh, areas because I really think that it would be valuable to highlight you know even if each end user comes in for five minutes and just talks about you know some of the tools chains they're using what are they using it for and you know how do they what are some of the gaps that they see where they would like the projects to address them that's good feedback and I think that that would be pretty useful. Ken, what do you think? Yeah, no, uh, that, uh, that sounds good. I've always enjoyed um, sessions where it's more open discussion with folks. I think yeah. you get a lot more feedback uh, rather than just standing there sprouting stuff and then having five minutes at the end. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> agreed, exactly. agreed. <laughs> because I think that both, yeah, I mean, you know, not only building the features on the projects and, you know, kind of scaling them out, but also at the same time uh, discussing some of the um, pain points that uh, exist and could be improved are both good avenues of discussion. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, most technical, most conference talks tend to focus on features, so, you know, and, and not necessarily practical, you know, implementations in the field, you know, so that's, yeah. that's all good. But I, I, yeah, I would really love something like where we could just, just, um, yeah, gather data, what was the most painful thing at the moment with yeah. proof of stability, right? Like, yeah. and just yeah. pass this feedback to open telemetry Prometheus, like vendors yeah. Yeah. And, and CNCF really. And we already knew that maybe, you know, lack of logging project within Apache 2, uh, or now there is uh, Elastic, but maybe something like Loki, which is which will be in the CNCF is missing or tracing back end. Correct, correct. Or maybe not, correct. maybe there are not relevant problems anymore. Maybe there are others. So all of those would be would be um, lovely to hear. And I agree. Have... And, and I think that, you know, again, um, there's there are several areas of you know related discussions like as you said you know how do you actually approach uh, logging right or tracing because even though jaeger is you know a graduated project on the cncf uh, and typically i can say you know just by interacting with different end users you know including folks uh, within my org uh, it's just that folks are definitely always have a preference for CNCF projects uh, because of just, you know, the neutrality and the richness that the projects provide. Uh, and I think that, you know, both in the tracing area, especially with, you know, Jaeger's maintainers kind of dropping uh, down to very few number and as well as, um, really you know tracing being important but yet you know kind of converging into vendor solutions at this point in time things change um it's important to understand you know like what how could we actually make sure that a more viable uh well-rounded set of solutions are available in the cncf or yeah. you know in the open source space to have and choice and have you know innovation uh, that is actually leveraging the expertise of the community um, uh, available because we all work on you know solving the same solutions across different orgs and it's it's just that I think you know there's a great lot of value for any user to be able to leverage and contribute there. Right, so yeah. tracing and logging have become significant yeah. areas. They've not gone away because logging is still, you know, one of the most foundational yeah. areas. Anyway, like anything we can do to improve this, like uh, we have, in my opinion, we have really a little bit dark ages for open source. Like many vendors are and projects are changing licenses and so on. So yes, just just showing that this is a gap and this is the consequence. And there are good parts about being in, in fully in open in CNCF. Anyway, whatever we can do in this space. Agreed. Agreed. Sorry. Agreed. Agreed. And I think uh, about it. What uh, I mean, given you've been involved with the Thanos and Cortex <laughs> projects right over time, and Prometheus itself. Um, <laughs> How do you uh, see, you know, having more of uh, backlog items that are available, you know, beyond the um, work that the maintainers are doing uh, themselves uh, to make those, uh, you know, areas more visible, uh, like a roadmap? Because I think that, you know, uh, even if it's a project board on GitHub, uh, it really helps because, you know, then it enables, for example, like if I have engineers, I can actually ask engineer, you know, folks to go and work on specific areas, right? Given we um, use Thanos, for example, a fair bit, right? So um, how do we, you know, I mean, again, kind of uh, communicating those areas also to a larger community, the tag could definitely help there, the, um, 
you know, and, and what do you think? I mean, is it useful to have that that um, visibility from the projects themselves? Yeah, it's a good, a good question. Like, honestly, um, it would be beautiful, I guess, if someone like PM or, or kind of like even engineers would maintain a, a subset of issues that we think are high priority for because, you know, yes. like maybe maintainers needs that or we yeah. see that users want that, but no one has time for this, for maintaining Right, right. It. I mean, core engineers so usually we, don't, right? I mean, so how we maintain this or like how it's maintained itself is within like list of issues, which are 200. Yep. And unfortunately, we don't have time to triage it properly. So majority yep. of them are not labeled correctly, but you could... Um, that like it's an opportunity, cool right? To, yeah, to kind of... it's, there are cool ways to be like sorted by emojis, which is kind of tells you actually a lot, in my opinion. I, yeah. I really encourage people to like put emojis and put like uh, comments when they need something. So you could uh, check by that. But we, the old model that or that we actually use is you are a user, you are you are using tunnels. You know your pain points. You know what you have to fix in this project. So do that. Like don't don't think about some roadmap. Like if you have rarely in in our eyes there are people mm. who have time to look okay i i have my problems but i want to be useful like mm. rarely no one has time for that so this is what we are not optimizing for yeah. we're mostly optimizing and, and even like even that is hard for people to have problem and have time to fix for it for, the, for themselves and for others right yeah um but yeah i'm we are open for suggestion and for example for prometheus we are in paris we have really a uh, very uh, ambitious goal of releasing 3.0 and mm -hmm. we will maintain some roadmap, of course, and uh, because we want to synchronize it within contributors and, and maintainers, but um, maybe we can check if this will be useful and we will see more contributors or less. Um, yeah, in fact, I think maybe it would be useful. And Bartek, maybe, you know, it. if you could, I will share the deck with you, but calling out like, what would you like to get feedback on for Prometheus? Uh, in the tag, uh, I can reiterate that, uh, especially, you know, and also for Thanos, you know, again, uh, if you're looking at uh, different areas from the project that you'd like to get people involved or feedback on, uh, that would be, I can totally reiterate that in the tag uh, talk. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see the purpose. Right. Anyway, we have another agenda items, and I have to. Yes, yes. Drop let's it let's go minutes. through that uh, quickly. <laughs> let's point. use our fifteen minutes, and then we can probably. End um, uh, that's fine. Okay, so white paper. Like um, again, like sorry for lags, but generally, um, you know, Matt and and Richie took like very close look and review, yes. and yeah. many other people's. Cool. Um, told me yes let's merge it and we already see pull requests against you know this version as the well new version yes <laughs> and so uh it's merged it's beautiful but let's discuss next steps um uh, because either yeah like how we want to announce it do we want to do the like proper tech maybe review or like there are probably some people who help us to really narrow the language but is it really worth it if people want to already contribute a new content and they want to read it early and it's already worth delayed i would just announce it honestly uh, even with some typos i think it's fine but it's up to you and, and the second thing i would like to discuss is like how people can contribute i figure out certain process but it might be non-trivial so uh, feedback welcome that's uh, we... that's a good call out, Bartek, because I think that um, uh, certainly I, I would say that um, let's like wait this week and then perhaps we can announce it next week yeah. uh, or at KubeCon, whatever works, you know, because uh, we can or we can announce it the week before KubeCon and then reiterate it at KubeCon, uh, yeah. which would be actually having the max impact because then you have an online announcement and then also mm -hmm. a uh, in-person, you know, discussion following up at the tag uh, session, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, so we can do it that way. But I agree with you that we should totally announce the 1.0 availability of this white paper and then also outline uh, some of the sections that um, we are getting feedback on. 
right? And and discuss some of the areas that are open. Do you have a list right now, Batek, of some of the areas that need need uh, more? You know, have yeah, there's like a ton of, uh, ton of tickets. Um, let me kind of get it with certain label. CNCF yeah. V one dot one, and it's here. I'm putting in our notes. Okay. Items. Um, so you have currently 17 items. Some of them are really specific, like add a section how you can visualize and explore this data using, you know, like CNCF tools, or like next to the CNCF, even if it means Grafana. Um, explain what we use. Yeah. Bartek, we cannot hear you anymore. Can you hear us? I think we lost you in the uh, right in the middle of your sentence. You might want to restart. <laughs> That's interesting. See, see, audio devices are strange things. Can at the end of the day. Okay, actually, you were talking to me. Fine, fine. What happened on the <laughs> tech? Yeah, so Zoom is happening like all the time. Like after ten minutes in Zoom, like oh yeah, it cuts you off, right? Yeah, yeah, I have seen that too. Anyway, um, so what are you were saying? <laughs> no, please go ahead. You got uh, uh, disconnected in the middle uh, on the. Okay, so so list. essentially what white paper right like yeah. uh, action items i put in the notes and there are very specific action items around um, data visualization ex exploration explaining grafana or how we you know visualize data how yeah. we used uh like what is use red golden signals what they mean how to obtain them like very specific examples um in each of the issues so it's mm -hmm. definitely available for contributions so maybe very important question to you like essentially the process how i see we have this announced version, which is 1.0. Yep. It is in our main root repo of tag observability mm -hmm. repository. And then we don't want to change it. We want to have it like available for others to read. Mm -hmm. uh, we want all pull requests to be done to the copy of this, which is in the tip directory. OK, cool. Because I don't want to kind of like mess it up with like whatever is published, sure, whatever sure. is in the review. Absolutely. So if that makes sense, then perfect. We could kind of reverse it. We could say, hey, whatever is in root, it's uh, it's something we change. It's a draft. Whatever is in uh, unit, whatever is in v.10, it's unchangeable. So we could kind of reverse if you want, but that's the process right I, I think I like. Uh, again, my personal pre preference is that the root stays stable, and okay. um, you know, if we have a v one dot one branch that you know we have or a subfolder, then folks can just uh, make changes there. Yeah, just 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 uh, just to be aware, like it will a little bit make contributions more more difficult. So we have to probably. They that's will probably a make a changes yeah. to the root and then but that's fine. Like we can I already did two, twice today. Please well, what do you what do you prefer? Because um we can link and uh can we pin things to our direct uh, account? Is, is another option to actually um release the white paper in, in the PDF. repo so then it's a release document and yeah. so what's in root is constantly updated and then if you want the specific versions it's actually a release and then we can tag tag those release docs with the actual version numbers on them um, and, and yeah and we can we can maybe i mean we can for sure for example share the link within which is within like a git tag yeah i yeah. like yeah yeah I think it's essentially yeah, that's, because that, things, so. definitely i mean because semantic i mean it's versioning and at the end of the day i think that would be actually more sustainable and useful long term um you know, it's convenience versus actually versioning it, and and this will evolve, right? As we go along, and more more you know info and more sections are added. Yeah, I just uh, the, the the counter argument why I did end up in the first place is that people will want to read the white paper, so they want how to find it, 
they will not look on the Sangeet tags. They will look yes. on our website yes. and read it. And they will be yeah. like half take. Yep. But maybe that's that's fine. I, I think that's fine. Like I um, think is there a way of pinning uh, the white paper link? Like uh, the you know, if it is even yeah, so, like we could put in the readme, make sure this is the link. Yes, like we, yeah. we could yeah. put it uh, front and center in the in the draft, you can say, hey, don't read it. If you want to contribute, do this. But then if you want to read it, here is the link how you should yes. do this. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I can I can move that. Uh, and I would say just announce it in KubeCon, like uh, and make it. Yeah, make let's, it let's do on that. Your, yeah. Your meeting, uh, on, on your presentation. Really. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I am absolutely thrilled to be doing that. And, and I think yeah. that Ken and I will be there for sure. So yes. we will definitely, you know, reiterate and announce it. Uh, and I think what we can do is let's uh, do a, a blog post or something where we can actually put it on the CNCF blog. Um, yes. Do you want to... Maybe I can start. I can start the doc uh, and then share, and nice. uh, then. But I feel free to add, and we can. Mm -hmm. I can get it posted. All right. Cool. So let's do that. Yeah. That so uh, with this, I can I can talk about the. There is this idea I want to share and and check. What do you think about it? And um yeah let's let's spend like two minutes on this so as attack observability um you know there is something we can do for the cncf space which is a little bit on enforcing side so mm -hmm. you know why not kind of like going through the graduation process and and and, and discuss with the cncf if we want to add a requirement around instrumentation so, hey, do you want to be incubated or graduated? You have to have either Prometheus endpoint or open telemetry mm -hmm. uh, push, right? So your application has to have metrics. And we want to put like a nice recommendation that, you know, this is what you have to do. And, um, and, and you know, this is the graduation criteria. So by default, you have a really nice um, CNCF ecosystem that at least you know, like have either open telemetry or Prometheus. What do you think? And by the way, this is not my idea. Like I, I really like this idea, but it was an idea from Promcon uh, through some maintainers like Matthias Metal mm -hmm. he, 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 he was like, why you are not doing this? And I was like, why we are not doing this? Yes. <laughs> this is so um, I can create an issue and, and we can we can maybe discuss with, with the CNCF. Yeah, let's want. definitely yeah. create an issue. The question I have though is that um I, I mean again having ease of use in terms of instrumentation, you know, built in, uh whether that is you know calling uh, prom or Prometheus or hotel, um and depending on the type of you know data that is being uh instrumented for. Um uh, obviously, you know, that that also has an impact. But yeah. um, the question I think to think about there is that with a requirement, we should also provide the ability to have tests or some way of verifying that, um, you know, the instrumentation that is being provided by a particular project works as expected. So Prometheus, I mean, obviously with the open metrics suite, of tests that were built initially uh, has that test suite. Remember, we did it for remote right, uh, Prometheus remote right also. Mm -hmm. um, and but I think and and Otel also uses that right for uh, interop with Prometheus. But I think that it needs to be extended for traces and logs. If we mm -hmm. need to, you know, put that if we suggest that is a requirement, right? Because there is obviously some work there that needs to be done by the projects yeah, yeah. i was thinking about metrics initially because yeah. like <laughs> like yeah i mean metrics no, has that oh. workflow right so yes i agree but tracing we, we could do it as a phased approach whereby yes. the first step is to get this gate in place for metrics and look to expand it for logs and traces in the future yeah, that's not uh, that's not a bad idea to like. I, hey, you I mean, to have... traces is mature even in open telemetry. It's stable, 
So there is no reason for, you know, tracing also not to be supported out of the gate. Um, that would help end users a lot because it's, you know, something that, you know, there is no user today that is only looking at metrics. They're also looking at traces and using them and logs, of course, goes, you know, out of the box, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. Um, we'll have to think a bit about it, and it's a good good way um, to start the issue. Bartek, definitely do so. The, uh, the tests are like: Are you thinking about the tests that? Hey, are you actually using uh, um, compatible protocol, or are you looking at really more application focused tests where? Hey, you are like a open cost, and when you run this open cost or a cube cost uh, server, I want at least like red signals from it. I want some, you know, like your HTTP traffic, whatever metrics. I want to ensure, and there will be tests for red for red metric. Do you think about that, or rather, would you have a test for hey, is what you send is really open telemetry or open metrics? I think I think the first step is to have protocol verification because that's uh, you know that's built in into the projects today. Um, what I think what we can do as a second step is as every you know receiver or uh, exporter is developed in you know these ecosystems for projects, uh, we recommend that they add you know tests for verifying you know the application uh, level types of metrics or traces or um, logs they are they are supporting right in the instrumentation because mm -hmm. it's instrumentation specific at that point yeah it will be interesting yeah uh, to also like probably look at the existing project like how they are yeah, exactly and for example because like we don't want to put enforce and like a requirement that doesn't make sense for projects like I don't know it's only protocols or yeah. like open metric like there's nothing to instrument or there might be other types of project which which follow the same path yeah it will be well, interesting. OTLP definitely supports tracing and logging as you know along with yeah. uh, so protocol level uh, verification is definitely yeah, something sure. that's useful right I mean that's the best way of actually reiterating that instrumentation is key and very useful end to end. Um, I think that, uh, as you said, custom, uh, you know, application driven instrumentation is, I think, very specific. Like, for example, if you're doing database uh, telemetry instrumentation, you know, or if you're doing, um, you know, data streaming with Kafka, for example, each one of these areas is has its own set of metrics and yeah. or traces and um i think that that will get built out over time we could we could do as you said a gap analysis of some sort across what exists and is baked in into the projects already which could be extended uh, and and kind of provide guidance there uh, which is easy for you know anyone who is using any of uh, these stacks to use it but i don't think we can go in with a requirement of application level instrumentation being verifiable yeah i think so it's custom. definitely a good long-term goal to have but it's going to be a lot more complicated but yeah. i i also see it as an opportunity to potentially drive towards um good practice red uh signals for different styles of things so database messaging yeah maybe you can start driving towards a standard of for this type of application this is the kind of things you'd expect to see out of it and we're kind of doing that with the own cncf projects and then others can start you doing the same thing and Agreed. maybe it becomes like a common way that if there's a messaging app these are the things you know are going to be there agreed agreed and and i think that some of the work that is being done on open telemetry with oh, semantic conventions yeah. uh, could be leveraged there, Definitely. which can then be you know used by other projects also, because again those assumptions are still you know ge general um, for each of the categories like messaging, for example, or HTTP yeah. or you know other 
uh, areas, databases, uh, etc. So I think that, uh, again, there are areas that I think will evolve and develop over time, but certainly as an initial idea of having instrumentation, you know, out of the box as yep. a requirement um, is definitely very useful for, you know, observability projects because yeah. it really, really helps all the projects be successful in adoption as well as, you know, use, user experience. Um, I, so I, will, I, I will add an issue. Maybe we can then discuss further. I have to go. Yeah, yeah that sounds good. Bartek, thank you again. And Thanks, thank Bartek. Very stuff thank on the white you. paper. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to yeah. the issue. <laughs> See you around. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye. So I think uh, uh, can maybe one of the things uh, once Bartek creates the issue is that we could also look at, uh, because this is also where I'd love to see some more convergence, you know, on, and maybe instrumentation is one of the avenues to do that, uh, where we actually call out some of the um, QLS, um, specification you know work that is ongoing with the tag work group as well as the uh, some of the KTS work that you did earlier um, you know converging into some kind of a metrics uh, instrumentation recommendation or a yep. or others I mean I think it will be a bit difficult across different projects right now to say how we would um get instrumentation standardized but on the other hand it's useful to kind of say hey you know you need to think about this because what's the point of you know building out this whole project if the instrumentation is not robust enough right right and i think um there's some cyc cyclical benefits there and that if we start having the cncf projects needing to define these things then that can be used as input back into open telemetry as to where there's problems, where there's gaps. Um, I think it'll be a, a big help to the CNCF ecosystem, but also wider open source projects as well. Yeah, you yeah, need exactly. to start getting to that place where instrumentation is coming from things with Hotel and it's not something you have to bolt on afterwards. Agreed. No, yeah, that's, that's right. a good, good. Uh, yeah, let's let's kind of also call this out as we work through the uh, the slides and see you know where we get to. Uh, yep. And uh, again, these are areas for discussion. I think it's very useful mm -hmm. to kind of bring it up in the discussions uh, at KubeCon and and see you know what the really what the temperature is both from the projects in terms of the lift. Uh, that projects would have to, you know, pull. For example, uh, if we just take profiling with EA Pixie, um, they do have instrumentation. Uh, uh -huh. Similarly, Hotel does. Similarly, you know, obviously Prometheus does. Jaeger does. You know, based on the integration with Hotel. But I think that it could definitely benefit from a bit more, you know, of a standardized approach. No, definitely. And I, I think even Hotel itself will probably have some work to do because I know, for example, the collector yeah. didn't, didn't have a lot of observability of itself. I know it has some now, but whether yeah. it's still where it wants to be is another thing entirely. So I think it's I think all projects will have a bit of an uphill battle to get something like this in place. But if we can make that first step small enough, then to get on, then I, I think that'll help. I think I think uh, the only question I would have there as a counterpoint, right, is that today in the CNCF, um, uh, that is if we introduce a requirement of this sort, right, where graduated projects have already kind of graduated without providing that support, uh, whether that is, you know, Prometheus over time or Jaeger over time or even Cilium for that matter, which just graduated, then, you know, how do we apply this kind of a requirement? Is it a 
you know, do we do we go and evaluate the current graduated projects? Too? Yeah, that's that's a good question. It's not just <laughs> the ones that are still coming through the process; it's the ones that are already there. How right, we because they haven't it? necessarily completed those requirements either. Right, you know. So, could we? How do we apply that? And that's a discussion with the TOC, perhaps, but. It may yeah. be also difficult for other projects to justify a requirement like that when there are graduated projects that may not have, you know, full support. Either. Yeah, I, I think that's the other key thing is we need to figure out what is the right stage for this requirement to come into play. Right. I certainly think incubating is too early. Yeah. Maybe sandbox, but it might just end up being when they graduate that they've got to have this in place. Um and I can't recall off the top of my head whether there's any um, cyclical reevaluation of graduated projects that this observability thing could plug into, or I think we... right now, right now there isn't. But we will have to consider it because I do think that, you know, if you look at the life cycle of some of the CNCF projects, uh, I think the tag can really help there because. Um, one of the things that is useful for you know a larger and community is that what is the status of the graduated projects what is the health of them not only yes. from a maintainer maintainer or a community perspective but also from in features and evolution perspective right because interop can mean many things it can mean integrations into different data sources into different data sinks, you know, into um, other frameworks. And is that really, are those, you know, really happening on all the graduated projects? Because, or is it, you know, more that, uh, and it can, it can also become somewhat of a political question where um, if a graduated project, you know, wants to sustain its, its um, growth, if you will, then does it deter others from you know getting to that point yeah right so we, it's complicated in other words there's, there's <laughs> definitely some questions that need to be ironed out around that for sure so but it's a it's a good good discussion to have because i think yes. that instrumentation is definitely you know uh very key to adoption of any you know pipeline rather than any observability stack so it's just uh, whether that's metrics or that's traces, logs, profiles, events, whatever. But it's just something that uh, I think is not being quite addressed in a clear way right now. Um, and it also goes back to the uh, fact that, you know, what is the story? What is the open source CNCF story for tracing? What is the CNCF story for logging? Um, you know end to end yeah yeah no and i and i think that kind of gets to something as well as i don't think right now there's any kind of concept of like archive projects so it's like you graduate and then you're forever graduated no you can archive, oh, you can there archive is the poc has uh, been archiving projects okay. uh, which are either you know uh, superseded if you will or right. have you know kind of outgrown the requirements they uh, were originally, you know, okay. That's good supporting. Okay. So there is an archiving uh, process now. Okay, awesome. So uh, again, but it is it is something that you know is worth bringing up and discussing because I do think that there is a tremendous amount of lift on uh, behalf of the users, you know, in terms of uh, trying to kind of make observability solutions work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, and I think that's kind of where Observe K8s can kind of play a role a little yes. bit. It's trying yes. to, for want of a better phrase, like pave the golden path of using these things together and you'll make your life easier kind of thing. Um, but yeah, for, for the broader CNCF landscape, there's a lot we can do there. Yep, exactly. But uh, but good discussion. So um, yeah. let's chat more, uh, Ken. You know, offline, and then let's uh, kind of put pull the deck together, and we'll uh, let's iterate on that.
but looking yeah, forward sure. to it. All right, coolness. I think um, I think many of the folks today uh, are also at All Things Open in in Raleigh, which is happening yeah. this week. So I think that again, uh, there is a lot of overlap across <laughs> different events starting up. But uh, talk later. And again, I think we're at time almost. So yeah, no, perfect. Let's, let's chat later. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks again. a lot. Take care. Bye. Bye, Tony. <laughs>